Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks so much for joining me again for another video. This is going to be about everything I got made up in September. So if you watched my September plans video, I did get everything I wanted to made up and I've also got two bonus makes to share with you as well, so I'm looking forward to sharing those. As ever, I'd like to thank everybody for watching my, any of my previous videos, for um, giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, or maybe leaving a comment. You know how much I love having the chats. Um, I got some wonderful feedback on my last video, actually, all about snipping notches and uh, making toiles and all kinds of everything. So thank you so much for those comments. And if you'd like to take a quick peek at them, there's some really, really good information there. So thank you. So September was a good month, um, a definite back to school vibe. Um, I also got my hair done for the first time since February 2020. So I'm back to being a blonde. I couldn't believe it when I, I ended up being a brunette. I hadn't seen that hair colour since about 1992. But anyway, so it was a lovely month and now we're into October, which I love because it's Halloween and fall and autumn, which I really, really enjoy. So without further ado, I'll get started on my first make. And this is my first make. This is the True Bias Roscoe blouse, which I've wanted to make for a long, long time, and I'm so pleased with how it came out. This fabric is from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door, and I just fell in love with it as soon as I saw it on the site when I was doing a mad dash to buy some more fabric for my Davenport dress, which you might have seen in my last video. So it's super pretty, a lovely viscose and this gorgeous kind of burnt orange colour with little blue accents, and it's got little gold flecks in it as well. I was watching Lauren's video from uh, Guthrie Ghani, and she had um, a few um, items of fabric with the same kind of accents, and she referred to them as metallic dobbies so who am I to argue so from now on they're called metallic dobbies so I'm super happy with how this blouse came out and just wearing a little ready to wear top uh, under it for modesty um, as I say I've had this in my stash for a long time and I was really keen to get it going and I thought this fabric would be perfect with the, the drape that it has and also with the beautiful gathering all there around the neckline so uh, going on my measurements, um, my chest measurements fall into a size 8 and then my hips are more around kind of 12 to 14. But looking at the finished garment measurements, it just gives the chest because basically it's an A line. So if your chest fits, then it, you know it's going to be bigger all the way down. Um, and the 8 uh, was going to be 48, which is going to be a huge amount of ease. So I... Um, I thought that would be fine for my waist on my hips. So what I did is I started with a size 8 and then graded to a 10, which worked out absolutely fine. To be fair, I could have got away with, with sizing down as well. I didn't add any length to it. I thought it was fine and uh, it's perfect for tucking into jeans. Um, but I did add an inch and a half to the sleeves. The sleeve pattern comes with little cuffs, but I'm a definite sleeve roller upper. So what I did was I copied the Davenport sleeve and I added a little elastic channel here, which is much easier for rolling up your sleeve. So I think it gives a nice detail. So I didn't want to make them too short or too long. So I think the length is pretty good. So very happy with that little hack there. It's got beautiful details. It's a raglan top and it's got lovely bias binding all the way along the neckline in a little necktie. Uh, the neckties are separate to the bias binding. So um, much like the... Um, sagebrush top it has bias binding all the way along and that becomes the necktie so if you, I was making this I just do bias binding for the whole thing to save myself the hassle of adding in a separate necktie if that makes sense but I think it's a really really pretty detail and it looks nice opened as well when you when you open the bow as well um it was just a really enjoyable top to make. I just look at my notes here to see if there's anything else I need to add. I don't think so. I think that was it. So it came together really, really quickly. Um, as I say, I left off the, the cuffs, which might have added a little bit of work, but I think the elastic channel works really, really well. And I just top stitched those. And I'm just very, very pleased how it came out. So it's perfect for layering. I think you could make it um, very smart looking if you wanted to wear it, say, more to work or maybe just going out. I think it would look nice as more a casual top as well. So I really, really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it. So I enjoyed making this top so much that I made another one. So this is one of my bonus makes. So I had bought this fabric over the summer and I just think it is absolutely gorgeous. So if you watch any of my previous videos, um, I don't have a fabric stash really. I generally buy fabric with a project in mind, make that and then buy some more. But this one I bought during the summer and I thought I was going to make a summer dress out of it, but that didn't really happen and the weather really wasn't conducive to a little light and floaty summer dress. So I thought it'd be much better as a top. And when I made this, I thought then this would be perfect to make another one. So I whipped this up straight away. This is uh, called Spanish Charm and it's a Lady McElroy fabric, again from Andrea Beyond the Pink Door. And it has your friend and mine metallic dobbies here, which are beautiful. And it's they call it a Vienna lawn, which um, might be like the way, say, Liberty calls um, a cotton lawn a tanner lawn. So it's just their naming convention, I think. I'm, I'm happy to be correct on that. But it's just beautiful. Look at the details of that the little tables with the, the wine and the little Spanish villas and the flowers. It is just 
gorgeous a little pedalo boat there as well i'll pop in a full scale picture of it just so you can appreciate the the beauty that goes on in this fabric but it is just fabulous and i thought it's perfect for this top despite it being gathered all the way along here i don't think you lose much of the detail you can still see the little house and stuff so it just really makes me want to go on holiday i'm not going to lie but it's just super pretty and it pairs well with um with blue jeans as well i think it's really really nice so this top came up really well again um i did the same hack with the sleeves a little bit of um elastic channel here which is which is useful um it's got the little pretty necktie detail for this one i made a straight size eight so um i didn't bother grading out of the hips because you just don't need to it's it's very roomy and there's plenty of ease in it i think i could actually size down again for the bust because it, it gives beautiful shaping here with the gathers so um there is an awful lot of ease in this pattern but i just think it's so pretty oh you can see more more if I move back, more of the impact. So just really, really happy with this True Bias Roscoe. So I would definitely recommend it. And I think even for the, the colder weather, you could layer it up with a little top and a, a cardigan. I think it would look very, very cute. I just adore this gathering in the, in the neckline as well. And it wasn't too bad doing all that gathering. It was fine. So they are my two Roscoe blouses. To go with those beautiful tops, I have my next make, which is my Marlowe cardigan. So this is also a True Bias pattern. And here it is in this beautiful fabric from Crafty Studio. So it's a beautiful navy cotton knit. So it just looks like a little knitted fabric there with the, the plain and the pearl. So very, very pretty and perfect for a little cardigan. I'll pop in a full length picture because it make it easier for, for you to see, but kind of drop shoulders and little pockets and also beautiful buttons. So I did uh, go out to the hive mind for my buttons. Um, I didn't think I had any buttons that would be suitable for this moustache, but I did. So um. I went out to you lovely people on Instagram to decide which buttons to use and you guys choose this ones which are perfect so they kind of got a little purpley tint to them which match really really well. So it's a very very nice cardigan perfect for this weather and I'm absolutely delighted with it. It, it suits a, a number of, of my makes as well which is great when you've got got a kind of ready-made capsule wardrobe. So um, I made a size 10 grading to a size 12. So my bust measurements fall into a size eight and then my hips a size 12 to 14, much like the Roscoe being the same pattern company. But I'd look at the finished garment measurements and it's straight up, straight down. So whatever the, the finished chest measurement is the same for the waist and the hips. And there is a huge amount of ease in this pattern. It is very, very oversized, just to bear that in mind. So um, I I did the 10 grading to a size 12. To be fair, I probably could have done the size, the straight size eight. There is that much ease to it, but it's a beautiful kind of autumn, winter oversize. You want to wrap yourself up in a kind the cardi so very very happy with how it came out one thing i did use in it which i hadn't used before is knit interfacing so i got that again from Anne Marie at the crafty studio so that was interesting just another little new technique for me to use um, I just about got out of the two meters, so you do need the, the recommended um, allowance. I didn't add any length to the bodice and it comes up perfectly on me. Um, I'm five foot nine. I did lengthen the, the sleeves by about an inch and a half, which, which I like as well because I do like the, a proper full length sleeve. I think there's nothing worse than kind of just ending here. You want it to be the full, full length, despite being a sleeve roller upper. Um, it's interesting, you need to know the stretch percentage of your fabric for the neckband. So it does give two neckband pattern pieces. So you do have to work that out. I'll pop in a little tutorial below that I found on how to work out the, the stretch percentage of your knit fabric. So I think I made the one for between 20 to 40%. And it stands to reason really because they want to make sure you get a really good fit on the neck um, so that there's the right amount of ease so it doesn't bag out or it's not too tight. So that is quite interesting. It also gives two options on how to insert the neckband, which you hadn't seen before. So it gives a beginner option where you just literally um, attach the neckband say much like um, in the Helen's Closet Blackwood cardigan if any of you've made that but then it gives a more um, intermediate way of doing it where you attach one side of the the band and then fold it over fold in your seam allowance and then top stitch that so it just gives a bit of a neater finish on the inside so I did try the intermediate version and there was a little bit of unpicking a little bit of swearing but I think it gives a lovely finish on the inside you can't see any of the the stitching um, much like you would if you just overlocked the, the inside here and at the end it gives a very neat and crisp point there so it, it's just interesting that it does give the two options I think it's great to have, to have both so it includes uh, both beginner sewers and also those with a little bit more experience. Um, the button placement it does give button placement pattern pieces for each size which personally I think is a little bit of overkill because mostly um, pattern, um, pattern companies just put where the suggested uh, button placement but I got the pattern printed on A0 which is great because it's quite a large pattern uh, from Crafty Studio as well I should add and I just think it was a, a bit of a waste of paper to have them printed for each size size range so just something to be aware of if you are printing this on um, A4 at home you might be able to lead off, leave off a good few um, pages which, which might help you in your assembly. 
Um, so they recommend that you use a gather stitch for your pockets um, to give a nice curve and that actually worked out very very well because sometimes I'm a bit nervous about doing um, knit pockets. I think my stitching goes ter uh, terribly wobbly and I think it just looks a bit funny but they, they, they went in very very nicely and pockets in a cardio like this are fantastic because you can put all your treasures in there. Um, so I was very, very happy with how this came out overall. And it's just a lovely kind of snuggly cardigan. I would love to make more in different colours. I think Emery has a couple more colours of this fabric, so I might have to take a quick look and treat myself. But oh, and it's got little cuffs here as well. So it's it's beautifully done. And I think you could um you could do a lot of it on your overlocker if you have one. Again, you don't need to if you don't have one, that's absolutely fine. But but I think it's a very, very nice cardigan. So here it is in all its glory. There you go. And you'll be able to see better pictures when I insert them. There we go. So that is my third make. Next onto my more seasonally inappropriate make. This is the Fibre Mood Lola and I got this fabric from Vibes and Scribes. It's a beautiful yarn dyed linen in bottle green. So I was shopping with my mum before and we, we were in the um, clothing department and there was a little girl's dress in gingham with a frill and I just thought it was super cute so I really wanted to recreate it. So I'd bought this pattern last summer and just never got around to making it and I just had seen pictures of it and I just think it's so pretty. So it has a little frill all the way along the front, it's got bust darts, then at the back it's gathered into a little bow and the back here is fully bagged out and then it's gathered here with a little bit of elastic and the frills go all the way into the, the seam at the back. So I'm very very happy with how this came out, it's a beautiful summer top. I might, it might go into the wardrobe now until early next year, but I'm just delighted with how it came out. So this was my first attempt at a fibre move pattern and I'm not gonna lie, there were some challenges, but I think they were all my fault and not the pattern. Um, the size chart it gives all the information in centimetres, which my brain doesn't work at, so I had to convert them. So um, my bust fell into a size 12 and then my hips fell into a size 16. However, if you look at the finished garment measurements, I didn't think there was going to be enough ease in the bust at all. So I ended up um, tracing out a size 14 grading to an 18 in the hips. I also lengthened the bodice by two inches, which came up perfectly, actually, and it's, it's a perfect length on me. I didn't even show the end of it there. There's the hem. Um, the only confusion came then in that on the size chart it gives sizes 4 to 30 but then on the pattern pieces it gives size 32 to 46 so you have to do the conversion which isn't a big deal but when you're cutting out late at night it's a bit confusing so I ended up making a size 42 grading to a 46. On five move patterns, they do include the seam allowance on the pattern piece. However, if you're grading between sizes, that means you have six lines still on your pattern piece because you've got the, the dotted lines for say my size 14, 16 and 18. And then you've also got um, straight lines for, or I should say, yeah, static lines, filled in lines for your seam allowances for the three sizes. So you do need to print out all six of those to be able to figure out where your seam allowance for your size in the bust, waist and hips are. So that's just a little bit confusing. Again, if you're cutting out late at night, just to bear that in mind. But anyway, we got there in the end and some of the instructions were a little bit confusing. There was one understitch paragraph, which got me for a long time. I almost chucked in the whole thing, but then I persevered, came back to the next day and it seemed to work out. And in the comments on my previous video, I think Fibre Mood do have sew alongs and they also might have more detailed um, instructions online. I didn't buy the magazine last year. I just bought this as a standalone pattern. So I'm wondering, are there better instructions online? So if you are making a Fibre Mood pattern, it could also be worthwhile um, checking out if there's any sew alongs because I think I really need it on some of the aspects of this. Um, the back has this elastic gathering here which is really pretty and it gives the suggested length of it but um, like my Davenport dress and the neckline you, you don't know how big or small it is until you've attached the whole thing and understitched everything so I think if I did make this in future I would just tighten that ever so slightly as it's a little bit baggy at the back and also this piece here is quite low down so you just have to be very strategic as to where your bra strap goes. But overall, really, really happy with this. I think it's a beautiful summer make and just with gorgeous, pretty details. And once you, you get the handle on the pattern, then you're away. So this is another of my makes. So my last bonus make are these little tiny t-shirts. So Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door has recently started doing a um, more children's fabric. And when I saw these little trucks and diggers, I just fell in love with them and knew of my little boys and they would love them. So I made them little matching t-shirts. So this is the smallest little one 
and I finished them with little rosy cheeks labels made by mummy. This is the Waves and Wild Eclipse Tea, which I have made for my little boy before in um, ice lolly fabric, if you saw my last video. So I just think it would match this fabric perfectly and they look super cute. I also got the grey ribbing from Andrea as well. She helped with the, the colour matching, which works out perfectly. So this one I made in a six months to 12 months, which fits perfectly. And then this one is an age four for my little boy. He's almost three. But I've done really, really deep hems on both of them. So hopefully they'll get a, a bit of use out of them. But they are just super cute. It's a wonderful pattern it goes up to size 12 I believe or age 12 I should say so I'll get an awful um, lot of use out of it and it does come with short sleeve options and a little hood option as well which is really handy so it's a great basic pattern to have so super pleased with those so I didn't show you this fabric on my last video because I didn't have it I bought it mid-month and when I saw it I just had to get it diggers and trucks I mean what could be better so that is my last little bonus make so I'll just grab my final make now and show you and here they are these are the Nina Lee Portobello trousers and I've dropped my notes. Here we go. So Nina Lee Portobello trousers and I just love these. So um, according to my measurements, I made a size 14, a straight 14 that matched my waist and my hip measurements. Um, and then the they say that you really should go by your waist measurement because it, because it's so much ease in the hips, which is correct because they've got the most beautiful uh, pleats at the front and then also darts at the back because so it gives a very, very nice shape. Um, I did have to take them in ever so slightly um, afterwards. They, they, they still were a little bit big. Um, so I just took in the, um, the waistband and, and that seemed to work out well. Um, they've also got lovely deep pockets and they're all understitched and they don't seem to stick out at all, which is great. Um, I did line it just because of the nature of the of the fabric. Um, I should say, sorry, this is Twill Wool from Amory at the Crafty Studio. Um, I believe it's a dead stock fabric, but it's just gorgeous. So what I did for the lining was I basically made an, another pair of trousers effectively and just cut them off, I think around knee length, overlocked them, and then inserted them into the trousers. And it does get you to hand stitch the waistband down. So when I was doing that, I just tacked in the lining as well and then just hand stitched it into the zip at the back. It does recommend an invisible zip, I didn't have an invisible zip, so my zip is very, very visible, but at least it is navy, so I think it matches in quite well. And I've got a lovely shell button here to, to finish it off at the back. So just really happy with these. Um, I did end up um, using a oh, just over one inch seam allowance for the centre seam and for the crotch because I just thought they were a little bit baggy. Um, I didn't add any extra length um, to the rise or anything, but I just thought they were a little bit baggy and uh, a bit loose. Um, and then at the end of them, I just overlocked the bottom and just turned it up once. So in the pattern, it says you should uh, turn turn under by a centimetre and a half and then a further three centimetres. So I just basically did a quarter inch. So just to give you an idea, I'm five foot nine. So effectively, I should have added maybe five centimetres if I was making this um, again to, to allow me to do that uh, that turn under for the hem. I just figured that in this quite heavy fabric, I didn't need that extra bit of weight. So that that's how they came out and they, they, they fit really well and they, they hang really well. They're not tapered at all, which would have interfered with the hem, but they just go straight up, straight down, giving definite um, Oxford, Oxford bag vibes, which I really, really enjoy. They're just gorgeous trousers. I'm so happy with them. I was strutting around in the house with them and I wear them with my nice boots and they look really well. Um, I think they'll be lovely um, on my October plans video. See that I'm planning a little top, which I think would look perfect with these as well. Um, trying to see, do I need to add anything else to the, to the comment about that? I don't think so, no. Um, I'm just very, very happy with how these came out. And these are my first pair of trouser trouser. I have made pyjama bottoms, but I don't think that really counts with the amount of ease and the simplicity of a pyjama bottom. But for actual trousers trousers, I'm really happy with how these came out. Um, I would love to make them in a slightly lighter fabric, maybe for um, spring, summer next year. I think they'd look really, really pretty. But I'm just so pleased how these came out. And I was trying to replicate a pair of wool trousers I had years ago, and um, I've definitely achieved that. So I'm absolutely delighted. So I shall be making more needly patterns in future. So there are all my makes for September. So I really enjoyed making all of those. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, seeing what I had made. Um, I will come back to you soon with my October plans. But in the meantime, um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Um, also, if you'd like to leave a comment um, below, that would be great. You know how much I love having the chats. And I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe. And I hope you all have a lovely October and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.